Good morning. Today we're going to be reading a story about the water cycle because we have begun our water unit. And the book today is called Water, Up, Down, and All Around. Written by Natalie M. Rosinski, illustrated by Matthew John. Okay, so the author is the person who writes the words and the illustrator is the person who draws the pictures. So let's read all about water. Where do raindrops come from? Does anybody know where raindrops come from? Plop, plop, splash, raindrops trickle down your face. Once these raindrops sailed in a cloud, they roared in a river, they crashed on the seashore. These raindrops have circled the world. <clears throat> the water cycle. Raindrops are made of water that have been used over and over again since Earth began. They are part of Earth's water cycle. The water cycle begins as water flows down from mountain lakes. So you see the mountain here, and that's a lake. So the water collected on top and it flows down. Water also springs up from deep within the earth. From mountains and springs, water runs into rivers and oceans. The sunlight, see the sun? The sunlight heats up nature's water until it evaporates. So that's the first word that we're gonna talk about in our water cycle, evaporate. What do you think evaporate means? See, when water evaporates, it rises <clears throat> into the air. Heat turns water into very tiny drops called water vapor. Water vapor is floating in the air all around you, but you can't see it. So evaporation is when the water rises into the air. Water vapor cools off as it rises in the air. As you go higher, right, it cools off. As water vapor cools, the tiny drops get bigger and bigger. The drops can now be seen as a mist or a fog. Or what else might you see in the sky? The clouds. Watch the clouds sail through the sky. Clouds are also made of water vapor. Okay, so all the water vapor collects in the clouds. When clouds brush against cold air, their tiny drops of water vapor get even bigger. The vapor in the clouds condenses and turns into rain. If it's cold enough, the water vapor may turn into snowflakes. Okay, so they collect in the clouds, they condense, that means they get closer and closer and closer, and the cloud gets heavier and heavier. And soon, the cloud can't hold any more moisture. Water vapor condenses, so it's called condensation. Water vapor condenses in other places too. In early morning, you might see dew. These little raindrops, these little drops of water, it's dew. It's glittering on a lawn or field. Water vapor in the warm air has condensed onto the cold grass. Okay, so it collects. When it's cold outside, frost sparkles on your window. Frost is frozen dew. That means it was really cold and the water froze. Where does water go? Snow melts, dewdrops evaporate into the sky and turn into clouds. Rain flows into streams, rushes into oceans, or sinks silently into the ground. Water gets trapped in mountain ice. How is water used along the way? 
Deer drink from forest lakes. Fish swim through ocean depths. Corn and wheat grow as tall as their roots, suck water from the ground. You need water to live too. How? You drink it, you fill up your glass, you jump in the pool, and you clean your soapy hands. You rinse them off with water. Yuck. Look at that dirty water. Water can become too dirty for drinking or swimming. Unhealthy things can wash into the water from factories, farms, lawns, and toilets. That's why cities have places to clean the water people drink. It's also why it's important for you to do your part in keeping the oceans clean and the sea and rivers because there's animals that live in there. And if you throw your garbage into the ocean, what's going to happen? It can harm the animals. So it's very important that when you're done with your garbage, you just throw it right in the trash can, not into the water. Round and round we go. Plop, plop, splash. Rain dribbles down on your boots. So the rain or the snow is called precipitation. So we have evaporation. When the water heats up and rises. Okay. Condensation. When the water vapor collects in a cloud. Right? And if the cloud becomes very heavy, that's condensation. And then precipitation is when the cloud gets really heavy and it can't hold any more moisture and it comes down. And it could be rain or snow or sleet. And once the water comes down, the water cycle begins again. Okay, so the water from the ocean evaporates condensates, right, condensation, and precipitates, comes down. And it's a cycle, it's like a circle. It keeps going and going. Okay, so now we are going to do a science experiment to try to see the water cycle in action. So I'm gonna hold up a piece of paper that's gonna tell you the materials that you will need, okay? So you can pause the video and go collect your materials. You'll need one large glass bowl, one small glass bowl, boiling water, so you definitely need an adult to help you with this, salt, plastic wrap, ice cubes, and a teaspoon. Okay, so you go get your stuff ready, and I'll meet you back in a minute. Here I am, and we have, I have all of my materials. I'm actually still boiling my water. Let me turn up the heat a little bit. So I have my large glass bowl, my small bowl, my teaspoon, my plastic wrap, salt, and my water is boiling. So before we do that, the first step you have to do, if you want to add the salt, you don't have to, but if you add the salt, it's going to show you when water evaporates, it becomes fresh water when it hits the air before it comes back down. So the salts will be like the ocean, right? We wouldn't drink ocean water, but you can drink, you can drink water that comes from the sky. So we're gonna try, I'm gonna try it that way. So we're gonna put two teaspoons of salt into the large bowl. Okay, so we're gonna do one, see, there's one teaspoon. And two teaspoons in my bowl. So let me show you the bowl. Okay. Now, the next step is you're going to pour your boiling water into the large glass bowl. Very important that you have an adult do this for you because boiling water is very hot. Okay. I'm going to take my boiling water. I'm going to pour it into my large glass bowl. 
Okay, there it goes. And you don't want to pour too much because you don't want the little bowl to be covered. And then you're going to stir the water and the salt until the salt dissolves. What does dissolve mean? It means it disappears, right? It becomes part of the water. So I'm going to stir it, stir it, and to me, it looks like all my salt is left. So I'm going to stop stirring. And our next step, you're going to take your small bowl, okay? Oh, actually, before you do that, if you want to taste a little bit of the salt water, you should blow on it, okay? Because you don't want to burn yourself. Yeah, it's very hot. You don't want to burn yourself, so just blow on it and take a little, ooh, very salty, right? Like the ocean. If you ever swam in the ocean and you swallowed a little bit of the water, very salty. Okay, so you're gonna take your little bowl and you're gonna put it right in the center of your big bowl. Now, if the water from the big bowl flows into the little bowl, you have too much water. Okay, your little bowl should just stay right in the center. Mine's, I can't show you mine, let's see. It's kind of floating around in there. Okay, but it's not overflowing. Now, you're going to take your plastic wrap and you're going to cover the large bowl. Okay, my plastic. And you don't want to make it too tight. And you don't want to make it too loose. If it's too tight, the water isn't going to flow into the little bowl. Put my plastic wrap right over my bowl. Like that. You don't want to make it too loose, because then it's going to touch the little bowl. So, here is what it looks like. Okay. Now, let's lower this a little so you can see. Okay, so there's my bowl, my large bowl, my little bowl inside. I might have too much water, because I don't think it should be floating like that. But we'll see. It's an experiment, and sometimes... We need to redo them. Your last step, you're gonna take your ice cubes and you're gonna put them on top of the plastic wrap. What do you think is going to happen when you do that? Let's see. I'm gonna take a handful of ice cubes and I'm just gonna put them gently on top of my plastic wrap. Okay, and I'm not sure how long it's gonna take for it to happen, although it looks like it's starting. What do you notice about my plastic wrap or yours at home if you're doing it? It's getting a little foggy, right? And we learned that the fog is condensation. I'm gonna put some more ice just to see if it'll help it along. Okay. All right, it might take a while. So I'm going to let you at home leave your, I'm going to leave my experiment like this, and I'm going to let you leave your experiment like this at home, and we'll see what happens, and we can compare notes, okay? So your activity, I'll take a picture of mine when it's finished, and we can send it to all of you at home. And your activity is going to be, when this is finished, to take a picture. Let me move this back up so you can see me. I want you to take a picture of you doing the science experiment. And then afterwards, you can draw a picture of what you observed and label your picture of each part. So which part of your experiment is evaporation, which is condensation, and which is precipitation, <clears throat> okay? And if it works in your little bowl, there should be something else, right? Remember we started with salt water. In the little bowl, there should be another kind of water at the end. And taste it and see if it tastes the same or different from the water in your large bowl, okay? And this is to represent the water cycle. So we hope you have fun 
And I hope the experiment works. I'll let you know if mine worked. Okay, and we can't wait to see your photos and your drawings. Have a good day.